guy on the back of the hers bag i'm looking at is that one of the hers family is it a family yeah do you know it's a regional thing what hers is mm-hmm. yeah. really yeah huh Uts is regional too yep there are people that we, but we got both of them here yeah, yeah we're in the we're in the potato chip region it's dog. a solid region that's the region i want to live middle, in middle middle we're in the middle east <laughs> the middle of the eastern united states yeah that's what the middle east means <laughs> I mean, fuck it. East is west is relative. Yeah, it keeps going around and around. Unless you're a flat earther. There's a joke. Yeah, it's true. I'm playing the messenger, and there's a joke because in the beginning of the game they say the prophecy says that the that a hero from the west will emerge. So it's like it, it takes place in Japan. Yeah, obviously because it's like a ninja game, and there's like a hero from the west will emerge, and then like spoilers in the twist of the game you like go around the entire world apparently <laughs> and then you come out of the west and the guy's like are you the hero from the west and he's like i'm from the never mind i guess i went around the whole world and <laughs> came back but sure i'm the hero from the west i can't believe how relevant that was to yeah <laughs> all right so welcome to uh welcome back to our part two of our uh, analysis of the super mario brothers film uh, I'm Randall Beatrice here with Austin Blakesley. It's me and Chris Anantuano. Hey. <laughs> so where we left off? Straight lounging over here. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> your your drink is a straw in it. I know. I'm leaning back. I can't even see you guys <laughs> behind this pop filter. Uh, so where we left off uh, last time is uh, we got our funding. Our screenplay, our directors, our cast, our crew, and most of all, our blessing from Nintendo. It's time so now to it's bu- time to fail. <laughs> it's time to buy some film stock and shoot this masterpiece. Mind you, this is all just a mere weeks after. So this is this is a tight timeline we got going on. Weeks after what? Uh, that like basically oh. like everyone signed gotcha, on in gotcha. our script. Yeah, yeah, but like <laughs> as we will get into even quick. There quick, are some things that are going to change. Quick side that note. too. Yeah. When exactly? The movie came out in 93. Yes. When in 93? Do you have the date? March 28th. Okay, so it was like in the beginning of 93. Yeah. So do you know where in the timeline we are now where the production yes. actually started? This, this is 92. Uh, I believe it's around summer uh, of 92. Shit, okay. Yeah. So what movies, happens when movies you... don't take that long to shoot. Well, that's what happens uh, when this you one practical did. practical effects. <laughs> yeah. But our first problem, that final script was not at all compatible with the neon lit sets that had already been built. Uh, what, what script? The bringing the Blade Punk Runner. Runner. So the yeah. like, I guess the, I don't. This was when they brought in people to basically add, try and lighten the tone a little oh, bit. Okay, this is okay, when okay. they brought people in, like the guy from Bill and Ted, to like write some jokes yeah. and add some whimsy. But now the dialogue was not correlating to this dank ass like looking uh city that they had on their hands going back to the blade runner thing that uh the part of the reason for this comparison that we keep making is because the production designer was the art director on the original blade runner i don't remember if i said his name in the last episode but i'm not even joking about this his name was uh david l snyder who was also working on demolition man at the same time uh, a gig that maybe felt a little more appropriate for him and his talent. I but mean, there, either there's way, a lot of, like, there's a lot of similarities between Demolition Man and the Mario <laughs> Brothers bit, movie. Yeah. If it's one thing, I, like, I love the way this movie looks. Yeah. I, I think it's great that one of the forefathers of practically inventing cyberpunk, no, cyberpunk noir also gave us the, uh, in his words, drug-inspired Dino Hatton. <laughs> Drug inspired classic <laughs> Mario. Uh, we did make a lot yeah. of acid didn't say jokes. what kind of drugs, but which was entirely opium. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> which was That's in, a better joke. Yeah, that is a better joke. Which was entirely constructed inside of the deserted Ideal Cement Co. plant in Wilmington, North Carolina. Snyder was actually pretty excited to be working on this thing. Uh, in Blade Runner, the street was one level, he said. Here I have a street level, a pedestrian walkway, and above that Koopa's room, 
plus six or seven stories in height. On top of that, I have more flexibility in, in the layering of levels. It's a major, major opportunity. You'd never be able to do this on a sound stage. There isn't a sound stage big enough. Yeah, that's cool for him. Yeah. Fun fact: the retooled factory that this movie was shot in was used again a year later for the nightclub in The Crow. <laughs> Is it the same nightclub? Uh, that's why Brandon maybe. Lee shot himself because the Mario movie. <laughs> He found he a load the gun. He found a. Yeah, how do you know? <laughs> he found a screener on the set. <laughs> and he wasn't the only one hard at it. The prop designer that uh, Austin uh, mentioned, who gave us all that gross looking fungus yeah, you, that you brought up, yeah. just came uh, hot off of working on Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Okay. Also known for its fungus. Yeah. The guy who did the costumes, he was he was hot off the blob remake. <laughs> so, so it's, there are a lot of titty dresses in the blob remake. <laughs> <laughs> lead, lead creature designer and supervisor Patrick Totopolios Polos Totopolos. I don't know. He later went on to have a very successful career after this, luckily. And special effects sculptor Mark Matre who apparently did such an oppressive job in the animatronic Yoshi puppet that when producers of Jurassic Park, a movie still in production at the time, and this will come up again later, visited the set, they almost considered hiring the engineers to come work in their shop instead. Yeah, I mean, that Yoshi thing is awesome. Yeah, and it didn't just stop here. This project was heavily created to have innovated and introduced many techniques considered pivotal in the transition from practical to digital visual effects. It was the first use of the software Autodesk Flame which then became an industry standard. And it was also the first film scanned with a digital intermediate, allowing for the compositing of over 700 visual effect shots. <laughs> all of this was undeniably well a lot. <laughs> all of this was undeniably a lot of effort. However, not everybody was happy with the result. Leguizamo was the first on set to start questioning things when he showed up <laughs> to begin filming. <laughs> it's it's supposed to be a Mario movie, he <laughs> said? <laughs> it's eight-year-olds who play the game, and that's where the movie needed to be aimed, he said. But the directors kept trying to insert new material. They shot scenes with strippers and other sex <laughs> sexually com com explicit content, which all got edited out anyway. I wish I would want to see that footage. <laughs> yes, this was true. One of the deleted scenes from this family-friendly flick featured actual strippers getting paid in cash off the clock for their inclusion. <laughs> they didn't get paid in coins. <laughs> get Koopa Some coins. Koopa box. I just want a scene where there are coins. What? a bunch of strippers on stripper poles and people are just hucking gold coins at them. <laughs> Making it be hell. funny. <laughs> Fucking Mario and strippers. <laughs> And he wasn't the only one feeling disheartened. It did not take long for the morality around the film to drop low when other issues started to arise. This is a Maya movie, he said? <laughs> the husband and wife director team was supposedly a nightmare to be working under, micromanaging every single facet of the production while also changing things right on the fly with very little respect to the crew. At one point, Morton even allegedly poured hot coffee on an extra because he didn't think the actor's outfit looked dirty enough. What the fuck? Interactions like this led those working behind the cameras to call the pair some pretty derogatory names. Man, what an uh, evil solution to that problem. Your costume's not dirty enough. I'm gonna pour <laughs> the hottest liquid we have available. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Christ. Cool the coffee off first, at least. Yeah. <laughs> While those working in front of the cameras became increasingly upset at the 10 week filming schedule to become 17, the panning shot of the city took over six months alone. I think I pointed that out. To shoot? Want. Yeah. How? <laughs> In what world? Yeah, a Wait, lot of extras. And... Aren't establishing shots the easiest? <laughs> yeah, but there were, this was like the, the, most of their budget was probably that. But well, it, okay. <laughs> but yeah, it was a shitload of extras. <laughs> yeah, it was. But everyone had different ways of dealing with their said problems, though. While the crew went on to pass along their unkind words to the Chicago Tribune, the cast had another coping method in mind. Drinking. <laughs> in John Leguizamo's uh, biography... Amen. <laughs> in John Leguizamo's biography titled... Um, <laughs> I drank a lot on the set of the Super Mario's movie by John Leguizamo. <laughs> <laughs> it is titled Pimps, Hoes, Playa Haters, and All the Rest of My Hollywood Friends, colon, My Life. 
Great title. <laughs> little birdie. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. He described how him, Hoskins, and Dennis Hopper would all take shots of scotch in between takes, knowing the inevitable disaster that the film was most likely going to be. This unfortunately then led to some injuries. During a scene in which Luigi was driving a van, John was way too intoxicated and slammed the brakes so hard that the sliding door smashed shut on Bob Hoskins' hand, making him have to wear a spray-painted pink cast for the remainder of the shoot. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I tried really looking go for back it. And find yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> But this would later uh, match the one Leguizamo had to get on his leg after he was drunkenly hit by one of the cars. <laughs> Other on-set close calls included minor electrocutions due to the faulty wiring and even Hoskins again nearly drowning. Uh, this in what? In what? <laughs> in what, what liquid? The plot yeah. is that there's no water in this world. I don't know. Maybe it got cut. Oh, was it the scene where he had the... The, the when they were in the sewer in New York and he fixed the plumbing. Oh, that might have been it, yeah. Yeah. This he was <laughs> drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me grab my screwdriver or something. I don't know, fucking know. But he pulls out an actual screwdriver drink. <laughs> 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 this caused him to use a stunt double for much of the later action sequences, who also got injured, uh, along with a slew of other actresses when the mattress they were riding on in the tunnel escape scene launched way too fast for its jump out of the pipe, causing it to flip over onto the concrete. Wait, make, they did that for real? Making everybody hit their heads. <laughs> what is wrong with these people? I forgot all about that scene. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> After all this shit, Mojo Nixon was reportedly very nervous for his transformation scene in Koopa's lab because of the way that the, the chair was designed for everyone to just be like, he was actually like bolted down to it. Yeah. But luckily he came out unharmed to Can us. Can get his head jammed into the fucking <laughs> To rock another double. day. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing more or less started to ru- turn into a gigantic circus. Fisher Stevens and Richard Edson, who played Koopa's two goons, began going off script and writing their own dialogue while more ad-libbing became rampant without having the time to be able to go back and fix it in other scenes. Jesus Christ. By this point, the movie was so over budget and so behind schedule, the only two things Nintendo cared about, and most of the cast and crew were either fucked up, working off the cuff, or completely belligerent. (laughs) There were even some firing and replacements, such as Peter Levy, the original director of photography, being forced out after a verbal fight with the directors and producer. Their first you're drunk. <laughs> Fuck you, you're drunk, but not as drunk as you. And their first composer, Jerry Goldsmith, who was attached to score the film, pulled out as well. Hey, I got an idea for music. No, we're just using the Mario music. You're <laughs> <for> fired. <laughs> Yeah, it just sounds like they went to a sound bank of Hollywood cliches and pulled them out of a hat randomly. (laughs) All this while the directors carried on not alerting any of the crew members or even each other of any of the changes. I love this. Dope. The crew started to get back at them in some, in some uh, pretty passive-aggressive ways, like having their own t-shirts made displaying rude comments on them. But I couldn't find what any of them said. I'm sorry, I tried. <laughs> fuck the director. <laughs> hey, not- that fuck the director t-shirt! <laughs> But the actors only uh, started to become angry and angry as the extra weeks continued. Hoskins started referring to Morton and Jenkel, excuse my French here, as the cunt and the cow. <laughs> Wait, which one was which? <laughs> <laughs> while, while Hopper was so fed up with the drawn out days and constantly changing production that he began to scream relentlessly at them both for hours. Of course, this also held up filming as well. <laughs> this is the directors, right? Yeah, that he's yeah. yelling at. Not to mention that most of the cast by now had just started blatantly ignoring any sudden onset rewrites to scenes. So everyone's drinking and everyone's like... <laughs> you know what? The more you talk about how much of a disaster the production of this was, the more I like it. Yeah, that's or kind of because it, Like, it's... Yeah, it's... Not even a coherent movie, but, like, it is one <laughs> solid piece of something. Like, that's impressive enough. Yeah, it's kind of amazing that this is amazing that this just ended, didn't end up being, like, the wacky deli episode of Rocco's Modern Life or yeah. something. <laughs> but, um... But this thing had to come to a close eventually, and with the restraints on time and depleting resources uh, now being a serious factor, 
Plus, CGI technology was very expensive and real hard to do back then, and they were running out of money fast. What was CGI? There was some CGI. I guess, what, the fireballs, maybe? No, that was probably practical. So what? Like when they went into the head transform machine and they should like showed the face transforming, that was definitely CG. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. When they transformed Dennis Hopper into an actual dinosaur. Yeah. yeah it splatted on the ground. And then the, the thing where the, the fungus guy transformed back into the dude from Alien at the end, that was CG. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Shit like that. Blowing up the Twin Towers. Jesus. I'm just that sure, was, like... That was Austin, CG. I'm sure you No, could... that happened. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait. That was after the movie. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm sure Sorry, you could figure out how joke. to do that in, like, an afternoon. <laughs> do it for $20. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays. yeah, I got After Effects. I can figure it out. <laughs> but, like, Jesus Christ, back then, they were like, yeah. this is taking up our budget. We're going to do much time on this. <laughs> But yeah, they they were scra- they were strapped for cash so much that the entire ending had to be just scrapped entirely for something quicker and cheaper. The original storyboard showed this epic battle sequence on top of the Brooklyn Bridge as the two realities started to merge, while what we got in the end was just a short standoff where Mario and Luigi blasted Koopa with some slightly decked out super scope guns. <laughs> that Super Nintendo peripheral more well known today as being an item in the Smash Brothers games. <laughs> While also ending on a silly cliffhanger directly lifted from Back to the Future, according to writer Parker Bennett. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like she's... Terminator and Back to the Future yeah. combined. Yeah. She comes in with a bunch of guns. There's some problems. <laughs> yeah, in she's the... like got grenades on belts on her. She's like, I need your help again, man. You won't believe what happened. Yeah. Anyway, once principal photography ended, Light Motive saw what they had just funded and immediately tried to cut the directors out of the picture. <laughs> and the producers didn't know what to do either. Some thought the movie needed more comedy and rushed to put in some ADR. The post-production supervisor said this was the most ADR looping of any film she had ever encountered. <laughs> Other producers felt the movie needed more action and reshot a couple extra scenes without the husband and wife team being invited uh, to the shoots. These shoots, by the way, also being helmed by their second uni- unit director of photography, Dan Semler, or as you may know him, the Oscar winning director of the very poorly aged Dances with Wolves. Yeah. Oscar people all over this joint. Wait, they got the Dances with Wolves guy as a second unit director? <laughs> yeah. He's like, I got an idea. We're going to adapt this book. All right, well, what have you done in the past? I was the second unit director on the Mario Brothers. <laughs> it's probably part of the reason they didn't bring the original directors back to the set. Oh, wait, set. was Dances with Wolves before this? Yeah, that came out in, like, 1990, Well, then I what think. the fuck? That guy's got better shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Kevin Costner didn't come back. He should have. It would have been a better movie. <laughs> and that's not all they, were, uh, they weren't They were asked to come back to, either. I was locked out of the editing room, Morton said. I had to get the Directors Guild of America to come and help me get back into the studio. <laughs> what the fuck? It, it, it I was, was going to say, the editors probably did the most work yeah. to put it together. <laughs> now. Like, I'm going to make a fucking movie out of this. Yeah. It was also at this time that the strange animated prologue was added with the dinosaurs talking in those thick Brooklyn accents. This was supposedly added after their final test screens left audiences confused as to what the center of the plot was really about. Good thing they fixed that. And the whole thing makes sense now. <laughs> but the movie was at a, finally at 100% completion and ready to hit the theaters. Was it 100%? Well, I remember last night asking what is happening in one scene. What is happening yeah. several times yeah. with no answers uh, ever found out. <laughs> well, that's like the one thing they're like, the fucking Brooklyn's got water and all we got is mud. And I was like, mud is just water with dirt in it. Just, you have the technology to de-evolve people into monkeys, but you can't separate mud, dirt from water from, from mud, you fucking idiots. They also have the technology to make everyone super, super intelligent. Smart, yeah, yeah why not just do that to everybody? And then they can be like, oh, we don't need this. We have uh, this planet full of super intelligent people. Uh, we'll just, you know, figure out, we'll, we can turn rocks into water water now it's trying to say something about society man <laughs> what i don't know all right so mario ready to hit theaters 
But uh, you know what else is ready to hit theaters? A little indie flick man, that maybe you guys have heard of called Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I told Does you it was going to come Dino back. Does that have Dino Hatton in it, though? <laughs> Did that, was that a disaster to make? <laughs> <laughs> um, but the Super Mario Brothers official release date was set. Uh, it was March 28th of 93, while uh, early screening of the Spielberg Classic were all anybody was already talking about. When did Jurassic Park come out? Uh, a week after. A week after, or, okay. It was either a week or two weeks. Okay, think, so like, yeah. but like right after. <clears throat> yeah, they okay. both had their like premieres around like the same time. Okay. Because they, they had a pretty early embargo, I think, on the Mario Brothers movie because the negative word of mouth was was there and the glowing <laughs> word of mouth around Jurassic Park was also there. Yeah. But the crappy video game movie that could was still set to beat Jurassic Park on a wide launch to the silver screen by one week. So okay. there it is. Sorry, I thought it might they have been get two a weeks. Chance, but, at least. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe that's all it needed to get the rabid uh Mario fans and Nintendo families in to recoup the cost of some of this thing. At the very least, say, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. Of course, now they were starting to run into uh, another challenge, and this is what I was saying, reviews. Yeah, the early kind of uh, going arounds of this uh, film were, were not great, to say the least. Uh, Siskel and Ebert famously gave it two thumbs down on their highly watched show, glaring its tonal inconsistencies and narrative to be so serious that they even added it on their list for one of the worst movies of the year. <laughs> Is this movie the reason why Roger Ebert doesn't think video games are art? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I think that Maybe. might be yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. It makes a lot more sense now. His arg- I agree. His argument, I agree completely. <laughs> They're not art. They're trash. <laughs> and they weren't the only ones. Uh, the film was pretty heavily chastised by most major reviewers at the time, including from uh, sources like the Baltimore Sun, mostly all pointing to the writing and its directors as the major culprit. It was almost unanimous uh, from both confused video game fans and family groups alike that the entire foundation of this thing was just outright bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, was, it was baffling. However, the Super Blade Runner brothers still sound, found some pretty undeniable unde- recognition elsewhere. The film's innovative special effects, creative art direction, and even scenery-chewing performances from its actors got significant praise, and not just from those working within the industry either. The Los Angeles Times, the New York Times, the Washington Post, they may not have given out glowing recommendations, but they did acknowledge its high points so much that it caught the attention of those working for the Saturn Awards to officially nominate it for Best Costumes and Best Makeup, and even the Academy, who placed it under consideration for the Best Visual Effects category at the 66th Academy Awards. Holy shit. <laughs> but, I mean, that's, that's actually not the, you know... It doesn't... It, it, it holds up pretty well in those spots. categories. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, regardless, this was not enough to please critics, nor get butts in the seats. I think the retrospective consensus on Rotten Tomatoes places the picture at a rousing 21%, based on 39 reviews with an average rating of 3.9 out of 10. The current page reads, Despite flashy sets and special effects, Super Mario Bros. is too light on story and substance to be anything more than a novelty. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> But now it's time for a game. As uh, I have purposely left this part out of our story until this moment, what do you guys think the budget of this whole project was? Ooh. $95 million. Okay. Chris, what do you say? We doing Price is Right rules? (laughs) Closest without going over? Sure. $95 million to one. Um... (laughs) $87,000 million. $87 million. (laughs) Well, actually, it was uh, only forty-eight million dollars, which was a pretty modestly priced, like which is pretty modestly priced when you think about the visuals and macho status of some of the actors back in the day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Follow-up question: How well do you guys think this did at the box office? Twenty-eight million. <clears throat> uh, Fifteen million. I'm sorry to say, it was around twenty-nine million. Ooh, suck it. Not Ooh. even man- <laughs> <laughs> not even man- not even managing to make half its investment back without the added cost of advertising. Meanwhile, Jurassic Park was on its way to a billion in returns, not only stomping our wackadoo video game action comedy into the ground, but also breaking record after record as well. But what did everyone involved think? Well, let's start with the man responsible for this whole thing, the Mario man himself, Mr. Shigeru Miyamoto. And what he thought? He thought it was okay. Uh, Funny enough, he actually commented that while he enjoyed the effort that was put into the movie, he still felt the end result tried too hard to replicate the game series. 
He went on to say that, quote, in the end, it was a very fun project that they put a lot of work into. However, the one thing I still have some regrets about is that the movie may have tried to get a little too close to what the Mario Brothers video games were. And in that sense, it made a movie that was about a video game rather than being an entertaining movie in and of itself. With that being said, I think this man is either truly insane or never actually saw it because none of that made a lick of sense. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Like, uh, maybe he just means, like, they're trying to force the whole, like, the characters are named Mario. Well, I, I mean, like, I, at least kid. it, it kind of see, seems like he's sort of admitting how difficult it is to even, like, yeah. start with, That's what with I'm saying. making like, a live action Mario like, movie. You know, maybe they shouldn't have made it about Mario at all. <laughs> 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 and it could have been a good movie then. Just imagine, like, what, like, and just like this is kind of stupid. Huh? <laughs> like, <laughs> how about the rest of Nintendo, though? Well, other than unceremoniously halting the early phases of pre-production on a Metroid live-action adaptation that oh, there were Jesus. talks of pushing, this was a uh, this was a dark uh, <laughs> fantasy sword and shield story. Uh. <laughs> they stayed pretty quiet. Neither the directors nor Joffe, our head producer that propelled the original meeting, never heard anything back from me, Yamauchi or anyone else high up at the company rather regarding what they thought of the finished product. They never phoned up to complain, he said. They were very polite, Nintendo. Uh, I still say it was shock, but to each their own. <laughs> that, that's me saying that. <laughs> yeah. He also went on to say that despite its box office failure and troubled production, that he remains proud. It's not that I defend the movie. It's just that in its own ex extraordinary way, it was an interesting and rich artifact that has earned its place, uh, which he is directly uh, referring to its strange cult status that we will get into yeah. in a little bit. Other than that, though, the Big N would never go on to attempt a production similar ever again, only up until recently with the launch of Pokemon Detective Pikachu, as well as Illumination, better known as the Minions team. Yeah. Right. Now, well, yeah, the Despicable Me team yes. that also made Minions. Go to hell. Now in production, uh, animated Mario cartoon film. Although now that, that probably would work. Yeah, although that one feels uh, much different to me, even if it's like. What if it was still post apocalyptic? Oh my god! Side? What if it was a shot for shot remake, but made by the Minions oh, team? That would be so great. I would love it. But yeah, it, this is uh, this will be the brothers' first time back on the big screen since. Also, there's that rumored Legend of Zelda Netflix thing with those speculations have been swirling around forever. Uh, the last thing I will say before we get into the rest of what the cast and crew's opinions, uh, thoughts is, is that Nintendo sure tightened their grip on representing these colorful characters going forward. Reading excerpts of those who were working on Disney's Wreck-It Ralph back in 2012, the company was extremely strict on how they wanted Bowser's cameo to look and sound for the few seconds of him being featured in the movie. Everything from the precise way that he would animate to how he behaved... It's just, I don't know. It's real hilarious to the me to think... The last time you fuckers got a hold of this yeah, dude. It's, it's hilarious to me to think that the long-tongued, spiky-haired weirdo politician in the leather jacket with a flamethrower, what we saw last night, somehow got approval prior. Yeah. Yeah. They learned their lessons. Remember when they, at E3 when they did that joke that went on way too long? <laughs> yeah. that with Bowser in it? Yeah. That was way higher quality than Riker. <laughs> <laughs> Miyamoto is, uh, was recently too... Be confirmed to be a, uh, a co-producer of that new Mario project, so I doubt we'll ever see anything like, you know, what we watched last night ever no, again, unfortunately. Make, you know how they're making Bill and Ted 3? Yeah. Set 20 years later? They should do that with the Mario movie. I think it'll do well. <laughs> with Hoskins and Charlie yes. Zelda? <laughs> Is Bob Hoskins alive? No. Well, Which we will get into that. I think Dennis uh, Hopper died, too. Yes. <laughs> Anywho, so, what did our... It's, uh, just, it's just Luigi being depressed. <laughs> the whole movie. Yeah, then they'll get that existential drama that they wanted no initially, villains, finally. No no Mario. <laughs> oh, why does he sound like Shay? Like, yeah. He's sad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anywho, what did our directors think? 
I got a little bit into the one, but the director um, said, "and quote declined to comment." <laughs> so our one co-director Morton, uh, he reflected on the movie. This is going to be a follow-up kind of on the that first thing, but he he described in a 2016 interview that it was a harrowing experience. He said that he felt very uneasy being put in the position of having to defend the new script changes. In addition to that, he claimed working with Dennis Hopper, which we'll talk on in a sec, as quote being really really hard really hard i don't think hopper had a clue what was going on <laughs> but despite describing the overall experience as humiliating he is proud of the film's originality speaking with game informer for the film's 20th anniversary he elaborated uh, on his vision by saying I wanted parents to really get into it. At the time, there was a very hardcore movement against video games and a lot of anti-video games uh, sentiment. I wanted to make a film that would open it up and get parents interested in games. <laughs> Which, kind of cool. I mean, he's not wrong about that, I guess. Yeah, but this is not exactly like the, the hero we need. No, <laughs> and as far as I know, this uh, really was the first attempt at kind of like marrying those things. Like, I think this was the first full-length feature video game movie, I'm pretty sure. I think so as well. He also did eventually admit here that once completed, from everyone's point of view, the film was a mess. <laughs> it got rushed into production with a script that had been written two weeks before principal photography and which had no input from either Annabelle or myself. Most of the actors had signed up on the old script, not the new script, so it's very hard to coax them into this new one. I don't think anybody was really happy with the end result. As for our other director, Jenkel, who... Uh, was brought up there. She, years later, spoke out saying, I do feel in my heart uh, it was a hell of an achievement to have it made under those circumstances, and it has in time That's happily achieved Still cult impressive. status. Yeah. I am often hearing how many people loved it growing up, watch it repeatedly, and are genuine fans. Uh, Chum chumps. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so now it's... Uh, like it, listen, like, subscribe. So now I think it's time to hear how the cast feels. Which apparently only has two categories, cool and collected and surly as fuck. Uh, so let's do that one first because it's more fun. Our Mario, well, uh, we know he was, uh, we already know he was pretty pissed considering all the cunt and the cow talk, but what did he think uh, years later? In a 2007 interview, Hoskins spoke very critically of the movie saying it was, quote, the worst thing I ever did and that the whole experience was a nightmare. Uh, in a whole separate other Q&A with The Guardian, Hoskins was asked, What is the worst job you've done? What has been your biggest disappointment? And if you could edit your past, what would you change? His answer to all three was Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> so yeah, none too happy there. Rest in peace, guy. <laughs> Jesus. Speaking of angry and dead people, let's get into our villain King Koopa. Dark. <laughs> well, it's no secret that Hopper was disparaging of the project, uh, of the production of the project for forever. And when our Bowser was tasked with answering the same question the same year Mario was, he had some even harsher words to say on top of Hoskins' now quoted regrets. The worst thing I ever did? Super Mario Brothers. He went on to say in the interview again with The Guardian, It was a fucking nightmare. The whole experience was a nightmare. It had a husband and wife team directing whose arrogance had been mistaken for talent. After so many weeks, their old agent told them to get off the set. Fucking nightmare. Fucking idiots. So, he then calmed down and elaborated more so a year later with his uh starting with his usual verbiage it was a nightmare very honestly that movie it was a husband and wife team directing it were both control freaks and wouldn't talk before they made decisions anyway i was supposed to go down there for five weeks and it, i was there for 17 it was so <laughs> over budget a lot of the same words in there but i just found the tonal difference between the two quotes funny yeah speaking of funny remember that six-year-old son he was uh trying to impress well, sometime later, when he was 18, there was, there was a dialogue between the two that I would be remiss if I didn't read verbatim. Son, Dad, I think you're probably a pretty good actor, but why did you play that terrible King Koopa guy in the Super Mario Brothers? I guess he doesn't game much anymore, I guess. Father yeah, Hopper. That guy. Yeah. Father Hopper. Well, Henry, I did that so you could have shoes. Son, <laughs> Dad, I don't need shoes that badly. <laughs> <laughs> Rip. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. But trust me, those 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 two crotchety old men, they'll be very talented. Yeah. D could not want to be any more removed from it, cult following or not. Though it wasn't all doom and gloom and snark for the aging cast. Some thought uh, over the years 
that the res- like the newfound respect for it was kind of cool. John Leguizamo even pulled the nice guy Luigi move, preparing a video message for the film's 20th anniversary in 2013, saying, I'm glad people appreciate the movie. It was the first. Nobody had ever done it before, and I'm proud of it in retrospect. Yeah, um, fuck it. I mean, what has he got to lose? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Five years later for the film's 25th anniversary in 2018, Samantha Mathis sweetly recounted in typical Mario Princess fashion, there are a lot of people who are really excited to meet me because I was Princess Daisy. That's all you can ask for as an actor, that your work and something you were part of left an impression on people and makes them feel good. There you go. Yeah, I could have said it better. It's yeah. so wholesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's now get into the cult falling that keeps coming up, which this one actually took uh, a little while. Sales of the first home video release weren't even really that great initially with the movie and its VHS being largely mostly forgotten. What? It's not like Nintendo or anyone continue to really capitalize on merchandising anything for it post-launch. If anything, they were probably uh, glad to step away from the Hoskins portrayal of everybody's favorite plumber to shift true focus on Mario's new venture into 3D with all in-house eyes and branding targeting the upcoming launch of the Nintendo 64. (sighs) Mine, Mario 64... The best Mario. That's a fuck. I think that thing isn't that your favorite Mario too, Austin. Yep. Yeah. It's the only good one. Fuck you. Fun fact. <laughs> fuck that, you. That's probably <laughs> Sunshine and Galaxy Two I know, is I know. still good. I, it's, it's, Three it's, and World are my favorite, but sixty four is a close there. Controversial opinion. It might be Odyssey. Odyssey is phenomenal. I liked Odyssey more than the Galaxy games. And yeah. Sunshine. That was kind of that felt like the true sequel to sixty four. I always wanted. Only with its later television reruns and inevitable DVD release in 2003 did people start to suddenly become aware of it again. Uh, Especially by those like us who grew up playing the games as kids and are now old enough to really take in the insanity of what the end result of this movie was. But those numbers really started to rise. It didn't even matter that the actual quality of that said DVD release was widely derided for being non-anamorphic and only in English Dolby Digital 5.1. The bargain bin status of it alone attached to such a colossal household name was enough to entice any curious gamer. Yeah, uh, who had to know that it wasn't just some kind of elaborate hoax of a fan film or something. And it seems like that. No, it doesn't. Doesn't it? No, it doesn't. It seems no. like it's just insanity. <laughs> so that's the thing. It was like the first video game movie, right? Yeah. When you yeah. look back at the attempts since then, I think back then people were like, this is nothing like the game. Yeah. And it's like, it's true. It really wasn't a kid's movie so much. But like video game movies really aren't now. No. They're not, but they're all based on M-rated properties. But still, it's like, look what happens when they try to make it closer to the game. It's just garbage. Yeah. I mean, it's, they're two completely different forms of storytelling. Like, yes. It's, it's, it's weird that things are able to be translated so well, sometimes from novel to film or television to film. But for whatever reason, we, they, we just haven't... Screenplay writers have not mastered the art of, of carrying that it's over. I, I think it's impossible. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's impossible. I mean, they're choosing a lot of the wrong properties, but we, we will get into that. Um, I think you need to take maybe you need to take an approach similar to this movie in order to get it right. Just maybe not mm. as chaotic and <laughs> over budget and yeah. shit like that, or not the and extreme apathetic. between the yeah source material and the end result. Yeah, well, it's like when you follow. There are certain things that they add for video games because video games have mechanics to them they do yeah and then you try to translate that the film and it just ends up being stupid there's also being gimmick there's yeah. also a lot of a lot of famous games have already had their film influence in them like when they said they're making a dead rising movie i was just like dead rising was clearly taking inspiration of dawn of the dawn dead of the this dead. is like yeah, a snake exactly. eating its own tail situation that's what i was about to say i don't think i'd like be- to see like a last of us movie well, well, i there- think that might be a cool like that would be better series, than the like supposed te- Uncharted movie that's coming out, which I love Uncharted, but it is a play on Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. Like it's an yeah. interactive version of that story. So it's like, how do you have a movie, an Uncharted movie, come out and not have it sort of like yeah. follow in that vein? Like, it's, well, that's my question. I think, I think Last of Us would be a great HBO miniseries. Yeah, you know, like. 12 episodes or something. I, bet, you know? even, I think a lot of video games would work better as miniseries. But even something as glamorous as uh, as a, a Metroid or Bioshock or Half-Life, they all have mute protagonists. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, you are the meant to be the yeah. the surrogate. Like, uh, the, like, the audience is meant to be the... Like, it's just... Like, 
What about it, this Witcher? Is that a movie or a series? It's series. supposed to be in Netflix. Yeah. 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 We'll God. see how that does. Uh, I'm sure, the, I'm sure the guy mute. who wrote it will that's hate it. Not a mute. Uh, no. Protagonist. No. But it's also like the casting. I'm a little upset about. Henry Cavill, I hate him. He's like some uber Christian guy too. Is He's, he really? He Superman. Wait, yeah. wasn't he Superman? No, I know he was Superman, but, yeah. but was he in? No, Jim Caviezel was Bash of the Christ. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but he was good in the Mission dude, Impossible movie. Yeah. One. Mads Mikkelsen, though, he looks oh, like yeah. fucking Geralt. <laughs> like, no, he's why in, is he? He's too busy he doing be? Death Stranding, man. Yeah, but he would have been perfect. <laughs> I love Mads Mikkelsen. But the crowds of Defenders must have continued to grow after they saw it, with those even frequently uh, frequenting online message boards so much that in 2007, one super fan felt inspired enough to build their very own fan site, Super Mario Brothers, the moviearchive.com, where they could all congregate together. Yeah, so that, in part one, I, I don't know if this is going to be included or edited out because I just played it over the mic, but... Yeah. We looked up a commercial for the action figures, oh, and that, that was archived by that website. Wait, really? Yes. Okay. Yep. That's funny. Mm-hmm. But the, they invited fans to come read details about the production, share ideas on potential sequels uh, after that cliffhanger ending, and most of all, maybe change people's minds on the finished project, finally getting it uh, the well-earned respect it deserves. Yeah. Right? So, like, that movie could have been something if it wasn't... Like those those people sound like a nightmare to work with, but I feel like they were just rushed through a lot of it because they wanted to get it out on time and they wanted yeah. to be under budget. That was Nintendo's, you know, mission. But like if they hadn't had those two things to worry about, I feel like they could have done a better job. Yeah. Maybe. Especially because they rushed it out to get it out by a certain date, and that certain date happened to be a week before fucking Jurassic. <laughs> Uh, you think those guys are kicking themselves for not uh, leaving to go work on like the, the people who uh, all the people oh, yeah. were, didn't work? I I doubt it was their choice. Uh, yeah, but I do know that for the rest of time, I will reference that famous 1993 dinosaur movie as the Super <laughs> Mario Brother. <laughs> Uh-huh. All right. Well, well, site founder and longtime fan of the film Ryan Haas, he's the one that runs that um, that page, was doing a pretty alright job of leading his goal, managing to score an exclusive interview with Playboy magazine. Yes, they have interviews too. Regarding pioneering event for the film's 25th anniversary, in it he said, "I have this collection, and the internet was growing in terms of fan sites during that era, the late 90s, and I always knew the Mario Brothers movie was misunderstood and a sore spot in people's minds, or at least the way it was being portrayed on the internet. The worst movie ever, kind of deal, but it's a way to celebrate the film itself and showcase the work of all the people who had a part in it, warts and all, good and bad." Yeah, I don't think it's the worst movie ever by no, any that's, means. That's very no. hyperbolic, but. I think about other video game movies. Yeah. Jesus. Doom is probably the worst video game movie No, ever. that's still in the higher echelon when you consider all the Uwe bullshit. Like, did you ever see House of the Dead or Blood Rain or... Uh, no, like, I there, guess there's not. A, yeah, there's a Far Cry movie, I think. What? Yeah. <laughs> that I'm sure Ubisoft would probably like to pretend never happened. He did a bunch of shit. I wish I could remember what other trash he did. Hold on, keep talking. I'll look it up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, three years later, in 2010, with the site still going strong, a man named Stephen Applebaum joined the site as editor-in-chief to help collect production materials and organize interviews. Most of the people were very happy about it because at the time, it was a very revolutionary movie, he said. Uh, they were introducing a lot of great special effects that hadn't been done before, and they had these really talented actors, and it was a project they were proud to work on. Mm. Giving them a chance to talk about everything they did, it really helped uh, them to share what they contributed and what they felt was important to the industry. Some of that information may be a little fabricated, but his heart was in the right place. And this was the Super Mario Brothers. This was the Mario Brothers movie, after all. Yeah. It's, you know, it's not Star Wars, but fuck it. It's, it's just makes the whole thing even crazier, I feel. All right, a little side note. Do a bowl. House of the Dead, Alone in the Dark, Blood Rain, yeah. Postal. Far Cry, and In the Name of the King, I think, are all video game movies. Right. God, Alone in the Dark. Woof. Yep. I think the House of the Dead movie has clips of the game in it. 
Like, they use it as transitional sequences. I'll just show you the light gun segments in the middle of it. I'm not even kidding. What? Yeah. (laughs) Regardless, those fan efforts trucked on and came through. And in 2012, something crazy happened. The movie fucking came back to the big screen. Except this time, selling out theater auditoriums to happy filmgoers ready for the crazy antics. And not baffled parents who ended up there only because Jurassic Park and Mrs. Doubtfire were sold out next door. (laughs) Yeah, what in the hell? I did not know this happened. Yeah, didn't matter if it was hardcore gamers, nostalgic adults, or even ironic hipsters, but these screenings apparently did so well that the film came back again a year later, this time for its 20th anniversary, and making an event out of it at certain locations, encouraging those to dress up and cheer and shout lines. For a little while, it almost felt like it was another Rocky Horror. And this even beat Ryan's original mission by five whole years. (laughs) But the pair didn't just stop there. In 2013, Stephen and Ryan actually managed to team up with one of the film's original original screenwriters, Parker Bennett, on a true sequel to the film in the form of a webcomic. Development on it began after a 2010 interview with Bennett, in which he openly admitted to them the sequel hook was more of an homage to the ending of the original Back to the Future, like I mentioned before. Yeah. It, was, it was not a serious indication of any potential continuation. Fuck no. <laughs> uh, after what had happened. However, the friends afterwards asked Bennett what he would have done if he was given the opportunity, and then he went on to provide broad points about the consequences of the first film and the themes that they would have explored the next time around, picking the adventure right back up for Mario and Luigi returning to Dino Hatton to aid Daisy in defeating mad scientist Wart, the final boss from Super Mario Bros. 2. We did heavily discuss the world of the film from its backstory to the character's motivations, he said. Bennett then gave them general direction before, quote, passing the torch to the eager fans. I don't know what the status of that comic is now or if it ever came out, but... So yeah, now I think it's time for our... This is going to be kind of our last section, uh, and this is our uh, Where Are They Now segment. Dead, dead, yeah. dead. First up, our franchise. Uh, well, dead. Yeah. <laughs> well, that computer animated Mario Brothers movie I brought up earlier was officially announced by Universal on November fourteenth, twenty seventeen, following rumors from the twenty fourteen Sony leaks. Then on January thirty first of last year, via Nintendo of America, they confirmed their partnership with the Minions Company, Illumination set to be produced by Miyamoto himself, like I said, and Chris Melodandry, whose previous works include Smash Hits, Cool Runnings, Sister Act 2, and a bunch of lower tier animated flicks like the Ice Age and Despicable Me movies. Lower tier. Mm-hmm. Bite yeah. your tongue. Mm-hmm. Chris stated that the film will be a priority for the studio with a tentative 2022 release date while reaffirming that Miyamoto will be closely involved front and center in the film's creation this time. Speaking on the challenge... What about John Linguizamo? He was an Ice Age. <laughs> he was. <laughs> oh, shit. Speaking on the challenge of adapting the series into animation, he went on to say the film would be, quote, an ambitious task, taking things that are so thin in their original form and finding depth that doesn't compromise what generations of fans love about Mario, but also feels organic to the iconography and can support a three-act structure. Well, there you have it, y'all. Mario is safe and in good hands. So yeah. that's the thing to me is that like what Mario fans love about Mario. What Mario fans the love about Mario is the platforming. Yeah. It's yeah, one of the, the tightest. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the tightest playing platformers of all time. Mm-hmm. That's what fans love. They love the. I mean, they love the the iconography of it, what the bombs look like and what the Goombas look like and all that, and yeah. uh, you know the out like the level design and stuff. But like. Nobody's just like, fuck, man, every time Mario rescues that princess, like, it just gets me, you know what I mean? Like, nobody, <laughs> like... <sighs> That's how the movie should have ended. He's fine like, staying in the games, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I agree. Speaking of, the uh, husband and wife director team, or the uh, cunt and the cow, as Hoskins said... <laughs> Well, as far as I know, they are still together. Morton went back to music videos and short films and has not directed anything new since 2005, while Jenkel, on the other end, is still very active, going into advertising for a while before doing a popular Beatles miniseries for Channel 4 in the UK, and eventually went on in 2018 to solo direct her first feature film since Super Mario Brothers called Tell It to the Bees. But okay, now on to our cast. As uh, you guys already know, two of them are... Long gone, unfortunately. R.I.P. Yeah. 
Mr. Hoskins, or Mario, retired from acting in 2012 due to his Parkinson's disease, while then uh, sadly passing away from pneumonia two years later at age 71 in April of 2014. Only four years after our President Koopa, Dennis Hopper's, you know, tragic succumbing to prostate cancer at age 74 after being unable to pursue chemotherapy. But let's cheer it up a little with Luigi. John Leguizamo still seems to be doing all right for himself, uh, publishing works like his book, I guess, while continuing to act. He most recently uh, ended up starring in the last season of BoJack Horseman, as well as John Wick Chapter 2. Princess Daisy, Samantha, or, uh, Samantha Mathis, still prolifically acting as well, albeit in mostly smaller roles, although I did hear very good things about that Clove Hitch Killer film that came out earlier this year. Apparently she's in that. I could get deeper into everyone here, but I thought we should just try to mostly keep it, the story about the, you know, the project itself. Think Mojo Nixon or Toad retired from music to be a radio DJ. I believe I already mentioned earlier that Fisher Stevens is now like an award-winning documentarian, which is pretty crazy. But enough of that. Let's get back to the uh, subject at hand, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Well, nowadays you can find some pretty solid retrospectives in places like Wired, Grantland, Variety, the Variety, the New York Times, and of course Nintendo Power, where I got I got a lot of my information from these various sources. Game Informer. Yeah, also Fallout. The whole series is based off of a Super Mario movie. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> some of uh, some of the dives tend to be a little bit more deeper than others. Some also are much more critical than others. I think we'd uh, all be the first to say after watching it and recording all of this that there are a lot of reasons why this turned out the way it did. Script issues, lack of a consistent vision, limited spending for special effects, a tight timeline, miscommunication with the cast and crew, booze. But try to remember that it was a different era and that nobody ever attempted anything like this before. Video game companies sure didn't know how much input they should actually have on a production at that time. Not that they know better now, which is why I'm going to read this Game Informer quote from Ben Reeves in 2013 and then make fun of it. It's hard to escape the fact that Super Mario Bros. was a bad film, a byproduct of a hundred bad choices and unfortunate mishaps. Super Mario Bros. should stand as a testament for the wrong way to make a video game movie. Maybe the industry will figure out how to do it right someday. And this is where I'm going to come in and say that not only have they not figured it out yet, this being six years later after this, this piece, but if you're going to try then either choose the right property or make it ambitious and weird like this. Yeah. At, at least the old Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter movies are bad in an entertaining way. Yeah. Because I don't care if Doom or Max Payne or Need for Speed or Hitman or Prince of Persia are all closer to the real thing. All those movies are boring. Like, that's their biggest yeah. problem. Like, it's just... And I don't know, like, maybe I should watch Doom again. I, ne I didn't even... I never even saw Warcraft. I, like, I know Warcraft Austin, is actually one. one of my favorite... Um, it's not the worst movie. It's one of my favorite yeah. video game movies I've ever but seen, But it's also because you get, like, this fantasy environment is such a helpful thing. Sure, yeah. that's what's like Warcraft Silent Hill. Is, I Warcraft is like... like that too but. you could easily in a another world with somebody who's uninformed uh, ill-informed convince them that warcraft is based off of like a book series or something yeah. you know right I mean? yeah and like i don't know even even rampage which we saw and then and the new tomb raider couldn't quite cut it yeah. like after climbing past the shit ass old ones like the the new tomb raider is Whoa. probably I think, isn't that the, other than the Castlevania Netflix series, like the highest rated video game property? You don't like the yeah. original Tomb Raider with Angelina Jolie? There were two of those. I know. <laughs> I've seen them both. More and than once. <laughs> and trust me, I know anything is better than those god awful way bull movies that Austin mentioned, or whatever the fuck that Resident Evil film series is. It's Make a Monster Hunter. None of those oh, follow... Oh, I forgot all about Resident Evil movies. Anything related to their, their respective origins. But as somebody who sat through all of Assassin's Creed, I would take the Super Blade Runner Brothers any goddamn day <laughs> Oh of the my week. god, that Assassin's Creed movie made me kill myself. It's <laughs> awful. Yeah. But who wants to uh, pre-order some Sonic tickets? Oh, well, I'm I so in. <laughs> Did they release anything yet about that? I was listening to a podcast, If I Were You, with Jake and Amir from College Humor. And they're friends with Thomas Middleditch and uh, Ben Schwartz, and they have them on frequently. They did an episode recently with Ben Schwartz and Thomas Middleditch, and they, people are just making fun of him for being Sonic the Hedgehog. I think they <laughs> Wait, called him Mr. Who? Chompers at one point or Mr. something like that. Mr. Chompers. <laughs> 
But that is our story. Thank you all so, so much for sticking with me for that whole adventure. I know it was a lot of information, but you guys are all wiser for knowing it. Yeah. And I got to, like, I got to get real into it with that research. My... I'm telling you, my roommates probably thought I was insane for these past couple weeks. There's still some stuff that I didn't fully get into, by the way. I barely got into the soundtrack, you know, that one I'm still looking for on cassette. That features Roxette, Megadeth, uh, Joe Satriani, and that George Clinton club song that me and Jason were jamming out to (laughs) yesterday. But uh, it's real dumb. Also, I think at one point, the two actors that played Iggy and Spike wanted to perform a rap that ultimately got cut from the project. Oh, shame. I know, the, the biggest tragedy of them all. But that was the Super Mario Brothers movie, and uh, I'm going to leave this all with a question just because this is always a fun thing to ponder about. What video game property do you think, I, I wouldn't say would make the best movie, but if you wanted to see a weird interpretation... I have an answer that's happening. Really? Okay. Yes, there's one video game movie that I am excited to see how it turns out. I was going to say, what do you want to get the Mario Brothers treatment? Like, oh, Mario Brothers, like, weird and out there? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, uh, you can answer your the first one first. So my yeah. first answer is the guy that made Kong Skull Island yeah. is making the Metal Gear movie. Yes. And I am, like, huh. hyped as shit for that. I think that's that great. Because yeah. Metal Gear is fucking weird as shit already. Yeah. yeah. And that dude can clearly direct some movies like that. And, and also... I've watched interviews with him about it, and he is like... He's a very uh, passionate Metal Gear fucking fan. Fucking huge Metal Gear fan, yeah. so important. I feel like... Which yeah. is probably the first time a director yeah. is... A, yeah. Like, he, he asked to be included on it. I don't think they found him, but then he, like, pitched some stuff and, and apparently got signed on. So yeah. like that's pretty cool. Yeah. I'd love to see a really ultra-stylistic, almost grindhouse-like film of Hotline Miami. I think yes. that, like, yeah. yeah, like I, that'd like, be cool. Be I like think that would be indie real fucking cool. ultra violence. Yeah, movie. and there's a lot you could do with it just because it's it's so centered around like its aesthetics and its look and sound. So I had a thought yeah. about that. The story is kind of loose in it because we were we watched that um that show Love, Sex, and Robots. Yeah, yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah, which is like. A compilation of animated things. Yeah, it's like vignettes. Vignettes, yeah. and each one is directed by a different director. It's similar to the Animatrix or Halo Legends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever. I thought if I ever got a chance to pitch a project like this, my pitch would be one of those shows where each one is a short film based Ooh. on an indie game. Oh, wow. That yeah. would be kind of wild. Like, be wild. Each one, you get the original indie like developers, like like a Gone Home one, maybe, or like yeah. a Hotline Miami one, or like Spelunky or super whatever. Hot. Like, <laughs> super hot. Super <laughs> hot. Yeah. yeah, sure. Like shit like that. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would do. That's a real, that's a way better answer than uh, mm-hmm. I was expecting. It's, it's funny because people have wanted, I think, was it Gore Verbinski? The guy that made The Ring was rumored to make a Bioshock movie, and everyone got real upset when it fell through, just like the Peter say, Jackson uh, Halo. Obviously, gritty sci-fi Minecraft. I think that would make an incredible <laughs> movie. <laughs> no, uh, real op- Bioshock would have been my choice. I, see, okay. here's the thing: I I, I would, would be all about a Bioshock that. film, but I think Infinite would be better just because Booker's oh, yeah. character. I disagree. Like, really? So here's my pitch for a Bioshock movie. Okay. Because they were gonna get Gore Verbinski, and Gore Verbinski is also the guy that did Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes. Which, if did. you watch Pirates of the Caribbean two, not a great film, but like the effects of like Davy oh, Jones yeah, and stuff, it's phenomenal, and like all that yeah. shit, like would work perfectly. So first Pirates of the Caribbean is pretty cool. Yeah, I like. So the there's first. a back. I've watched that whole series. There's a backstory to Bioshock, which is that, like, New Year's Day something went wrong oh, and they all to, got to spliced. kind of start a little before. Yeah. Like, oh, a yeah, prequel to, like to the, the game, yeah. not okay. necessarily... Do, like, that's like, a way the, better answer. Like, went wrong. like yeah. pick a character and follow them through the events of that leading up to the beginning of the game. Yeah. I think that would be cool. Yeah, because, that would be really cool. Because that's the yeah. thing about, like, I, I would love to yeah, see a Bioshock idea. movie, like, visually especially, but, like, you couldn't just follow... The character round, because m- most of that no game's character. story is either in, is delivered through, like, uh, like radio or in, it's vi- environmental storytelling, which is yeah, a lot exactly. harder that's to like, do. That's in a the good idea. Of the film. Often, yeah, yeah, have it be like that is like pretty the good. The night the city collapsed. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, so it's not a just post-apocalyptic movie. It's yeah. just like the aesthetic of the city. Have it but end it's where the crime. game begins. Yeah. I-, I think I only like I brought, I just said infinite just because that story is more directly given to you, like you know. Yeah. But those are some good answers. Mm-hmm. But uh, we will see how Beautiful the Katamari. <laughs> we will see how the Mario Brothers 2022 turns out. We'll see how Sonic turns out when we eventually do another one of these episodes when that movie comes. One out. <laughs> one little addition. I went on to Super Mario Brothers the Movie dot com. That's it. Yeah, Ryan and their Ross. latest post is from what's today's date? June something. 
May 17th, 2019. So, um, <laughs> He's a still little, at it, huh? A little over a month ago as of the recording of this. Okay. And it says, We are incredibly excited to announce just in time for the 26th anniversary <laughs> the discovery of a VHS tape containing cut footage. <gasps> the tape surfaced in an eBay lot alongside materials owned by film's primary producer, Roland Jaffe. Oh, man. Uh, we will be digitizing the tape with the intention of restoring the footage for our forthcoming Region 1 Blu-ray release. Oh! So stay tuned. Fuck. Yes. <laughs> And then it says, it says, until then, it's a great time to revisit our deleted scenes page to get an idea of what footage we might have found. I bet that original ending there. stuff is in there. Yeah, but there's one Spike is the and... the stripper in there? The no, stripper Sp- scene? Spike and Iggy have a rap. Yeah, there it is! Oh, God. And they have the... Did you see this? The lyrics for the rap? No! Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. That's so um, I could read it. Yeah, maybe that'll the you know what you should play us out. Do the plugs and then read the rap. Okay, that's a good idea. <laughs> I'm not gonna re- I'm not gonna rap it. No, though, no, I'm have... not telling you to do that. It's not you like I'm gonna a... read it. You're yeah. You, <laughs> you want to read it? Rap, <laughs> okay. I like right, Chris some... Fisher Stevens. Let's do stuff. some plugs first. Okay. Um, thanks for listening. Not sure where you found it, but if you want to hear more, if you somehow found part two and want to go back and find part one. We have a website, hotbuttoncast.com, and that links to everything, so you can find our Twitter for up-to-date including info. Our, uh, including our commentary of this film. Yes, and if you, you guys find... like this, we have plenty of other yes. bad video game movies to try and explore. We, we mentioned this in, in the first part, but we have a commentary of this. We watched it, and us and a couple friends and our sound guy you know, commented on it, and that was a lot of fun. Yeah. You can follow Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Hotmancast for updates. Chris is already smiling. At you, can find, you can find all our feedback. <laughs> you know, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Podbean, whatever other services you want. We have, you know, we have videos of li- the live episode that we did up there and a bunch of weird photoshops that I did for all our episodes. So check that yeah. out. <laughs> and yeah, that's it. <laughs> now to Jason, play. Jason, bring a beat, all right, on this. <laughs> oh, God. And, and fade us out. He'll do it, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you ever get the feeling you're an automatic pilot? I'm assuming it's the 90s. It's done like uh, yeah. early 90s white people rap. Yeah. yeah. You're going through the motions like waves in the ocean. That life is just a series of brainless notions. And you want to feel something more than empty emotions? Well, we just met two plumbers who had an idea. They showed us the light and a new frontier. Mario and Luigi, they know what's right. We gotta take a stand and put up a fight. Hook. Koopa. The party pooper. The pooper scooper. <laughs> this is a big Kanye song. <laughs>